Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This is more vision for young Christians. Welcome back, welcome back. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Bible Study. This is Bible Study episode 66. Today we're going to be diving into Acts chapter 4, verses 23 to 31. We have been in Acts for the last couple of weeks. We are talking again about Peter and John. And just to give a little recap, Peter and John um, healed a lane. Um, it was lane, lane beggar. But then they, I just want to yes. make sure. Yes. 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 Peter and John healed a lame beggar um, who was in front of their church. And after he was healed, everybody was looking, everybody was surprised by uh, the healing that was done and word got spread to the council. The council didn't like the fact that they healed the man and they arrested them. They had them sit in jail overnight. And then the council called them up to find out exactly um, from them, what they did, uh, the lame beggar was there. So it shows as the testimony said that was done was, was actually done. They see it in um, the physical and uh, towards the end of that council meeting, they basically forbid Peter and John from um, continuing to spread the word of God. Did I miss anything, Renee? So far you've done well okay, from the last time we recap. Yeah. I just want to make sure that I fill in with everything. From there, we're going to be continuing. We're going to be talking about the believers pray for courage. So to begin, we're going to start off with a prayer being led by Brother Nate. Uh, today, the reading will be done by me and our ending prayer will be done by Brother Manny. You guys can please bow your heads, close your eyes, take it away, Brother Nate. Oh, Lord, and our God, we honor you and praise you. Your name is excellent in all the earth, as David proclaimed. And we're here, Lord, just thanks for this opportunity to proclaim your name again. Uh, we're just so thankful that we're uh, given this opportunity, this liberty, this freedom, this context, Lord Jesus, to break bread with each other. In different distances, Father, don't take it for granted. We give your name to praise. Father, we pray the prayer of David from Psalm 119. Open up our eyes so that we may behold wondrous things out of your law. And help us what we open up today. Help us to hide it in our heart, not only so that we don't sin against you, but also that we will be strengthened in the power of your might, Lord Jesus. So bless this time we have together, brothers. And bless this time. Bless uh, the, the transmission and uh, of this um, breaking of bread together. Also pray, Lord, that you will uh, cause lives to be saved, that those that don't know you the pardon of their sins, let them see the breaking of bread. And, and as you alluded to, as your word said, Lord Jesus, that this shall all men know that uh, we're disciples uh, for us having love one for another. And even in breaking bread, let souls be added to the kingdom for the honor and glory of your name, Lord Jesus as we endeavor to do this, to honor you. Amen. Amen, amen. Now we'll begin the reading for today. Again, we're diving into Acts chapter 4, verses 23 to 31, which we'll be talking about the believers prayed for courage. Verse 23 says, As soon as they were fed, Peter and John returned to the other believers and told them what the leading priest and elder had said. Verse 24 when they heard the report, all believers lifted their voice together in prayer to God and said, O oh, servant Lord, creator of heaven and earth, the sea and everything in them. Verse 25. You spoke long ago by the Holy Spirit through our ancestor David, your servant, saying, Why were the nations so mad? Why did they waste their time with these pen plans? Verse 26 says, the kings of earth prepared for battle and the rules gathered the rulers gathered together against the Lord and against his Messiah. Perfect. So this is right after um Peter and John came back from the meeting with the council where they forbid mm -hmm. them from from spreading the the word of gospel. So they reported back to what is it? Um they reported back to the other believers and mm -hmm. uh, the scripture is saying that this was mentioned uh, from before that this is exactly what's going to happen and I know we didn't get into the other part yet 
But I love the fact that they went back to the other believers and told them what happened and they started to pray. I know I'm going a little bit too ahead because you're ready to get into that part from um, once we read the rest of the scripture. But uh, I think that's a key thing that pointed out to me um, for them to um, come together and not lose their faith. So in a time of where they're being banned um, from spreading the word, instead of being be like, you know what? Hey, can't do that no more. Uh, they call upon the name of God because they knew this is um, something that was going to happen due to um, the scriptures that mentioned that it was going to happen. Did okay. anything else um, stand out to you in the first portion um, as Ron or Manny? It's, what, your breakdown was great. As um, It was great. Um, I think the thing that stood out to me was something I read in preparing for this was this is why community matters because I believe the apostles got strength from the context of community. And that's what caused them to come together and rally behind the apostolic voices at the time. This is just my, that would be my two cents about it in the early portion. I think I got to read it again. Um, that's 23 and 20. Okay. I might just take it upon myself to read it. Okay. So it says, as soon as they were freed, Peter and John returned to the other believers and told them what the leading priests and elders had said. When they heard the, the report, all the believers lifted their voices together in prayer to God, O sovereign Lord, creator of heaven and earth, the sea and everything in them. You spoke long ago by the Holy Spirit through our ancestor David, your servant, saying, why were the nations so angry? Why did they waste their time with futile plans? The kings of the earth prepared for battle. The rulers gathered together against the Lord and against his Messiah. Um, so I guess we, um, from 23 to 26, it's kind of giving you a background in history. And it's also showing you of, of what you can do as a people when you're faced with trials. I don't, what, what exactly did the priest say to, um, say to Peter and John? If you want to go back, um, it would be, from what we talked about last week, you can go from uh, 19 mm. if you want. We we're talking about, I'm, I'm looking at from ESV, um, when Peter and John answered them, they wanted them pretty much to summarize it to stop speaking in the name of Jesus. Oh, okay. Yeah, I remember that. Um, they, and you go even earlier in chapter four. Mm -hmm to see the reliance and the fulfillment of what Jesus told them. that when you go before men, don't worry about what to say. The Holy Spirit will, will guide you. Holy Spirit will guide you into what to say mm -hmm. when it comes to facing the religious leaders. So mm -hmm. if you go from verse eight, look at something, a, a powerful observation, Peter Phil and Holy Spirit was able to speak to the rulers and the elders uh, respectfully mm -hmm. about we, and, and then fast forward, quick fast forward to 20. We're speaking of what we've seen and we heard, so even literally, geographically, the past three years of them being with Jesus in person, mm -hmm. the things that he did, the kingdom he was introducing, um, mm -hmm. the message, and um, something we touched on last week, they understood the power and the influence of a name, even when the mm -hmm. name wasn't present. So they really wanted to stop or try to stifle the demonstration of the kingdom through these men. Mm -hmm. But the thing that astounded the leaders, as you know, um, I believe it's verse 13, he said um, in chapter 4 that they were uneducated, they were common men, they were just astonished, but they'd mm -hmm. recognized that they had been with Jesus. So that whole thing happens. Now we get to where they were released mm -hmm. from the confrontation, from that battle, and I say mm -hmm. battle, from that confrontation, from uh, that conversation. And they went to the people, mm -hmm. um, their community. That's why I was saying, understanding power, the power and the strength of the context of community. Because yeah. they had to carry a, a divine mandate mm -hmm. starting and happening in Jerusalem. And all these things happening, um, conflicting on the social scale, conflicting on the political scale, even conflicting mm -hmm. on the religious scale. So them now, the first couple of verses, they're giving 
report to what happened in the conversation. Mm -hmm. And I love that the community that we were talking about came together and lifted up their voice into mm -hmm. prayer. Yeah. It kind of reminds me of like um, something that they had here, pray and protest, because I think um, sometimes government officials do certain things that don't coincide with moral laws or just, just, they just do things that aren't right. And in that situation, they could have been like, you, don't tell me, don't you gonna tell me not to say Jesus, you're gonna do this, that, and the third, and you know, go crazy. Um, and that's good to voice their opinion, but it's good to see that the first thing that they did was also pray too. So I like that. I think that was, there's a lesson in that. Um, you have to learn as a community. I wrote this note down. I did a personal devotion mm. um, many years ago, but I took this note down from this section. Mm -hmm. Their initial posture was prayer. Mm -hmm. Why? Because they needed access from the throne of grace for the boldness needed to continue to be a witness. Mm -hmm. It started out as prayer for the apostles and them just pouring out their fears because, to be honest, the message of the kingdom, like, like Jesus said, it, it was a sword to divide. Mm -hmm. time. It was a sword to divide. Not necessarily like in, in a bad sense, but this is now you have to really make a decision you got to really you basically got to <laughs> decide yeah. if you're going to embrace the message of the kingdom follow jesus way follow his teaching or mm -hmm. not and you also have to remember at this time they're still wrestling with the guilt on a religious level maybe spiritually about them crucifying him to begin with yeah so you got to factor all those things in there you know what i'm saying Mm -hmm. So, I would say it's this portion of text shows the power and the importance of community and coming together, first in prayer, and then they were seeking for the actions to take. Yeah. But it began with them crying out to God as a community, together. So that's that. That's what stood out to me as I'm re as we break down those first few verses. If you're going to be an effective witness, you've got to have an effective prayer life. Mm -hmm. Jesus taught them that. The disciples now are teaching the followers, those that have come, those that were being converted to Jesus. That's the way. And I love that they turned to God first, cried out to him first. So that's the take. That, that was a key takeaway for me. Anything else stood out to you about that part? I, I'll touch on what the prior and the reference comes from a little in a little bit later, but what 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 else might have stood out to y'all? Hey, you just you just you just hit it off. <laughs> you just hit it off because um um could you could you please uh talk about that the point where you're talking about the prayer part? Uh could you please repeat that, Brother Nate? Because I want to make sure I write that down. Okay. For when when you talk the, the point that I just made or the prayer itself that they referenced to uh, the point that you just made the one that you said that you okay. got from the old devotion that you did before yeah the, the the prayer their prayer life was key for them to be an effective witness if mm -hmm. you're going to be an effective witness for Christ it it has to be really you have to really come from a place of prayer and unfortunately a prayer life. It's not as strong as a cohesive unit. Well, for the most part, it's getting there. It's getting better than what it's been in the past couple of years. Mm -hmm. But it's going to take an effective prayer life to be an effective witness, to minister the message, the, the message of this gospel of the kingdom. You know, wow. um, they started from that place. Because here's the thing. As you read and what their prayer was and what God did in response in them, through them, for them, they gave, the Holy Spirit gave them the boldness to the point where it shook the room where they were. I know we'll get to that later, but just think about that. That, they postured their heart towards God in prayer because mm -hmm. they were, there was some sense of fear. They didn't know what was going to happen next because mm -hmm. obviously what will happen next later on down the chapters is some of the uh, great men and, and, and plowers were getting persecuted, were getting killed. Stephen. Um, other disciples, 
You later on in chapter 12, there's James taken out. Peter was supposed to be killed. God deliver him, you know? But it was the body coming together to, to, to just surround their leaders, but also for them to gain strength. Because honestly, I can't imagine that pressure of a newfound message, a life-changing message, a groundbreaking message that's going to challenge every system of the earth. And already starting to challenge in Israel how far that message would have gotten along without them continuing as Acts chapter 2 talk about prayer, study of the word, um, communion, fellowship. Those were the core principles that helped to sustain and to grow the body in its infant stages. And you see it here come to life as they meet to pray. Consider this. I had to go off on the table like this, but consider this. Their prayer, and it shows you the power of effective fervent prayer that talks about the dreams. They're praying the beginning of Psalms chapter 2. Literally, we're talking about why did the Gentiles rage and the people plot in vain. Pray Psalms chapter 2, which was a messianic uh, text. Because the, the, the message and the kingdom of Christ, the kingdom of the gospel, the message, it's going to impact so much that it's going to mess with the government. It's going to mess. It's going to, they're going to vent. They're going to, they're going to set themselves against the Lord and his anointed, his Christ as translated. Literally. And that's really what sums up part one. They're praying the word. They're praying the text. To me, that should also bless you and say, listen, effective prayer, you've got to have a relationship with the word of God. So you know how to pray the word of God, apply the word of God in prayer. God always answers in response to his word. Always. So for us in this generation, for us to take the, the next step, for us, that's going to take the next, the next level, the next phone. We've got to have their posture. Yeah, there might have been fear that drove it, but they never forsook their posture, which was prayer. Yeah, yeah, that was that was that was great, man. And it made me think about a situation today. Like I'm just me, like walking with my dad, and he's just able to kind of like just say, pull up on people and just invite them to church and stuff like that. And I think. As uh, you were saying that um, prayer is like you have to, you know, prayer is essential for you to be able to witness because when you're praying, your 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 focus shifts. It's not really on yourself. It's on the other person. So your heart is just more soft. Your, your heart is just more softer to other people and their concern, or your heart is softer to what's going on in your community because if the focus is not on yourself. You know, the focus is on God and you know how He's able to impact others' lives. So I think prayer is definitely, um, definitely essential for you to be able to witness because it puts you in a place of humbleness and not thinking about yourself, um, thinking about others and how how they could be helped um through the power of god so yeah that was that was definitely that's definitely a great um a great tip is you want to be able to witness other people prayer is something that you definitely have to uh get used to there's another reason for that you must take it from jesus's life and ministry while jesus was able to be moved to compassion the way he was well you can i believe prayer shifted and helped to, I mean, he's the Lamb of God, but I think the principle that he was trying to show us is that if you want to have God's lens, you got to communicate with him. So remember, we talked about this months back, John chapter 5. He's talking about, I only do the works that I see my father doing. He wouldn't see and know what the father is doing unless he's communicating with him. The strength of the early church, I believe, um, happened because they they were really just hungry to operate from the lens of the Father to help carry out this message. The commission is a supernatural mandate. It's not an evangelistic. It's not an evangelical. It's not a. It's not for any one uh, diadem of thought. The the commission that Jesus left us, which is what they were we seeing in the infant in infant stages, 
coming to life, honestly, um, is like somebody broke it down. You're coming alongside Christ's mission. Great commission, co-mission, the co-mission, right? So we're watching Peter and James and John, all because they healed the man that was in front of the tabernacle, couldn't get into the service because he was lame. He had a condition. He couldn't go in the synagogue. He was relegated to being a beggar. Translate, there's so much ways you can translate that to today, but just consider that. There's backlash about these men healing a man for 40 years, near 40 years, I believe it is, not able to walk. He was brought to the synagogue, but never been able to be brought inside. So just, just, just some of the things you have to think about with that. And to see the miracles happening, but to see the resistance happening for him, I think prayer was the only thing that would help to really shed whatever fear, whatever anxiety, whatever the concern they might have had about really advancing the cause of Christ. That was a little worry right there. I made sure that I, I took my I took my notes down because the point that you made, Renee, that you said, um, if you want to be an effective witness of Christ, you have to have an effective parent, prayer life. That that really hit that really hit me. Cause I, I related to um I related to the um the message of in order to speak to God people you need to speak to God first because mm -hmm. it's all about preparation because in order to do God's work you have to have a good prayer life you have to continue to be in contact with him whether that's reading whether that's worshiping reading the bible um just all the other things that we're able to do because um going out to his people God know how his people is so that's why he makes sure that he's telling us, make sure that you're preparing with me before you get out there because you don't know what's out there, but I do. So that's why mm -hmm. the whole preparing process is very important because God knows, um, he knows how his people are. So he knows what is required um, from us, what is required in order to get the message to, um, to his people. Because we never want to lead nobody the wrong way. We never want to sway them the wrong way. We never want to um give a like mixed message or just preach something that um would would not give the reaction to, um receive the reaction that the Heavenly Father um want. And also going back to the community point, um community is very important, uh, especially with them just coming together. Peter and John going back to the other believers and telling them, okay, this is what happened, and then they. They go straight into prayer. That's that's like a very a very key thing, um, because instead of um complaining, instead of trying to um just do anything uh, anything of that sort, they went straight to the heavenly father. I think that's something I definitely do need to work on. Um, if there's challenges, problems, and stuff, go straight to the source instead of um reacting off of feelings. Go straight to the source. I think that's another key point. Um, when anything occur, go straight to the source. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I'm gonna write that down. You can take so much from this instance, and we haven't even gotten to the, the other portion of the text. There's a lot you can take. There's a lot you can take from Book of Acts in general, but I, I, this is one of the I call one of the, the unsung chapters in Acts that's so powerful. So from 23 to 26 have been so so powerful so far. We didn't even, we didn't even get into the um, other part yet, but uh, if it's nobody, reason. yeah, if any, if nobody else have any point, uh, I'll get into it. I just want to make sure that everybody get their thoughts up. We'll hop right back into the scripture. We'll be reading the last of the scripture, verses 26, verses 27, my body, <laughs> verses 27 to 31. For in this city, in fact, both Herod and Pontius Pilate with the Gentiles and the peoples of Israel gathered together against your holy servant, Jesus, whom you anointed to do whatever you, you, your hand and your plan had predestined. Oh my goodness. To do whatever your hand and your plan had predestined to take place. And now, Lord, look at their threats and grant your servants to speak your word with all boldness. 
while you stretch out your hand to heal and signs and wonders are performed through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. When they have prayed, the place in which they were gathered together was shaken and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God with boldness. Uh, Arison, you should probably read the NLT, bro, because I felt like I went too fast and I wasn't hitting the pauses. I don't know if this was a conversation or a pr- I think it was a prayer. No, this is a prayer. Yeah, no, no. This is a prayer. Yeah, this is a prayer up to verse 30. 31 was just the response of God, what God did in response. You're fine. Okay. Yeah, you're fine. Um, You're fine. Because it's pretty much it. Because NLT is saying the same thing. They just switch up the words a little bit. So exactly the same thing. Um, But their their prayer um. That the prayer pointed out to um um me uh very much with um not only their boldness to go into the prayer, but then their boldness in the prayer of asking God to give them the boldness to be able to continue the spreading of his word for him to give them the uh, the guidance because I'm pretty I'm pretty sure that all of them knew the dangers of um them continuing to preach your word from being with God from being with Jesus um throughout all that time with all everything that happened so just seeking that guidance of um the Lord when you know what could happen uh, I think that's just very much important because we we are not we are not strong by ourselves we need the strength of the the heavenly father to be able to give us the courage because we're human we're we're um we have feelings. Sometimes we're gonna be scared. Sometimes we're um gonna be mad. But we get to receive that guidance from um the heavenly Father. Cause I know definitely I I would have been scared um to be able to go back out there and try to spread the word after something like that. But they didn't let any fear get to them and went straight to the source. Pointing back to the point that I said earlier, um when anything occurs, just go straight to the source. Because the source will give you the information that you need to continue. It will give you the guidance that you need to continue. Uh, definitely, bro. Um, anything else that um, anything else that out to you in the prayer itself? I have thoughts. Just want to just want to use that prayer to use to also encourage something in us too. I wrote a note as I was reading over the text. Um, that prayer. As you mentioned before, that prayer for boldness. Um, I like the transaction. They prayed for God's power to be demonstrated. You know, he asked God to respond. They asked God to respond. Can you imagine all of them like one voice just basically saying this? It's not just one person praying this. Mm-hmm. Literally, everybody's in one accord. They may not all be chanting, saying the same thing. No, no. But because their hearts were postured, you know, this prayer is hitting. Especially for verse 29 and 30, after they, after they quote the word, I just think it was so masterful that they drew, they connected the dots and drew the bridge to today's need or in their day's need. And now look on their threats after they quoted Psalm one and, um, Psalms 2, verse 1 and 2, to really open up, um, just really to bring light and connect the dots what they were feeling, what was happening. And they're saying, now God, look on their threats. Grant your servants to continue to speak your word with all boldness. I'm reading from the ESV. While you stretch out your hand to heal. So it's, they're saying, listen, give, give your servants the boldness. You do what you do best. Stretch forth your hand to heal. So all they're praying for is the boldness to continue preaching Mm -hmm. and they give room for God while you stretch out your hand to heal, while you perform signs and wonders through your son, Jesus name, them acknowledging their need and then them acknowledging the one that's greater than the need that's in front of them on the request. It's a prayer principle. And that's why I believe God responded in verse 31 the way that they did. Bible says, and when they had prayed, 
the place in which they were gathered was shaken. It was like an earthquake happened in that area where they prayed. God literally shifted them, shake, shook the room, and they all were filled with the Spirit again. And the Bible says, and they continue to speak the word of God with boldness. So God responded, and God responded instantaneously. God responded, and and a lot, and and as a result, they continued to preach. They continued to speak the word of God with boldness. The body of Christ was continuing to grow. The community was continuing to gain momentum. But everybody had to be on the same page where prayer was concerned. That was hitting me so hard. It, 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 that's the place. You can't be in effect. Look at all the revivals that have taken place in history. Study them. Um, Just got refreshed on it a couple nights ago. Uh, and then last night when I went to um, our NYC, Seek Night, something I saw was trending, Sons of Seymour. A powerful revival of, of, of Azusa Street. Bear that. All the powerful revivals that took place in the 20th century that's getting ready to happen here, and it's been happening. Kentucky, all these other places. No great move of God happened without it being burst in the place of prayer. And they show this. If you want great moves of God on the earth in your life, in your life, in your sphere of influence, take a take a page from them. See what the need of the is in the world. Put it before God. But ask God for boldness so you can do your part, and God does His part while you're doing your part. That's what stood out to me. I'm praying that that will stand out to you guys. Let God do His part. Confess that you need Him. Ask for the need. Ask what you need. In this case, they ask for boldness. And as a result of them asking for boldness, they said so that the signs and wonders, the miracles can happen in your name. Because they're not going out there to preach in their own strength. They're going to represent you. So it goes back to what we were saying just a few minutes ago. You're going to be an effective witness. You're going to be an effective, wherever you're planted, whatever you're doing. It has to happen in that prayer place. That's good. I like in uh verse thirty that they that that they that they um they prayed in faith. It says, um, while you stretch out your hand to heal, and signs and wonders are performed through the name of your holy servant Jesus. So it's not like they were asking, which is not bad to ask, but they were praying in faith that God will be able to heal and do signs and wonders um through Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. Anything else jumped out at you as, especially with the, the tail end, verse 29 to 31? Mm-hmm. Um, what pointed out to me is that the fact that they asked for the boldness in his name to give him glory um, and just realizing that I won't be able to do this without uh, the Heavenly Father because I know sometimes we get blindsided and think that we're the creditor, we're the source when we're just the messenger that God sent to receive God sent to um God sent to send the message. That that's making sense, right? I just want to make sure. God Say that again. Um now I saying um what pointed out to me is that they prayed um for God to give them that guidance and that boldness to be able to deliver his word and receive his mm-hmm. strength. Uh because I know sometimes we we kind of have that mindset of um, we kind of detach God from the uh, situation and put ourselves forward instead of realizing that um, God is what we need to put forward in this situation. And we're pointing mm-hmm. out to me is in the scripture that they was able to do this. Like, God, I need your help to be able to do your work. Give me the guidance. Mm-hmm. Give me the strength to be able to do your work so that the glory can go back to you. So the whole point you're keeping God in the agenda, keeping God in the um, the the which was the word I'm trying to use, the entirety of of the work that you're gonna do. Yeah, keep right the center. Yeah, yeah, keep Jesus in the center. Definitely. That's what makes that's what made those eight verses. Those are actually some of my favorite verses from the text, just because of the their response and then God's response, because. 
he did he did verse thirty one. That was all God. That was all God. So the place is shaken, and they're filled with the Holy Spirit. Let that be something that stands out to y'all because I think sometimes we make the mistake, especially like we come to the de uh, denominational approach, Pentecostalism, to fill with the Holy Spirit. You don't need them no more. Clearly, as you see in the book of Acts, also earlier in chapter four, Peter, then filled with the Holy Spirit, responded to the religious leaders. Now, fast forward to here. They're filled with the Holy Spirit so they can continue to speak with boldness. You, are, you have to constantly have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. It's not just the one time, you know, whatever happens, you're speaking in tongues or whatever you... That's honestly low level stuff, you know? That's the initial. I'm not trying to just honor, no, no. That's the initial step. But you've got to have, keep having a relationship with the Holy Spirit. Because this place he's going to take you. You need him. Just like how Peter did to be filled with the Holy Spirit to speak to religious leaders in a manner that doesn't dishonor them, but they have to feel the conviction of what they did on a social level, what they did to Jesus. And let it be known that the message is not going to die because in your mind he's still dead. We know he got up. You need the Holy Spirit to give you boldness in the communal context because of what was going to happen later on to end chapter 4 and then in chapter 5 and then throughout the rest of the book of Acts. Everything that was happening came as a result of God shaking where they were. Because verse 32 to 37 shows you how the community grew as a result of it. The body heard the message and growth was happening. So that's a powerful takeaway. That's something you gotta, we got to keep with us. we got to keep getting filled with the Holy Spirit. we got to make sure we keep crucifying the flesh and the agenda of the flesh. Because how are they going to see Jesus clear if it's tainted with us and flesh and soulish stuff? So just things to ponder on. That's definitely true. That's something that we could, um, that's just a prayer that we could just have every morning as Christians. Lord God, forgive me the boldness to share your word with others. Lord God, give me the opportunity to be able to, or Lord God, use me this day. Fill me with your boldness. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Because when we do that, um, you start to see God opening doors and God doing things that you didn't even expect. But it's because of what you prayed for and the heart that you have to be used by God and to bless other people. Definitely. Definitely. Because using the boldness of the Heavenly Father can have a tremendous like result um, that we we wouldn't even know of. Because, you know, God sometimes don't be giving us the insight. He just give us the direction. And then you'll find out what's you're gonna find out the effectiveness or what the purpose of um was that uh later. But definitely with me, I always try to pray for the boldness that I just continue to do his his work, whether I'm doing it um through my videos online or I'm doing it through my personal life. I just always just always have that boldness. I remember this one once I was on the bus coming home and this man started to talk to me at first, and I was it, it to say I wasn't trying to talk to nobody on the bus, but then God kept telling me as I'm talking to him, talking to him, and I'm like, you know what? All right, I'm I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. And I just went ahead and had a conversation with him, talking about what I was doing with like YouTube and stuff, and I gave him the information to my channels and stuff. And I don't know exactly if I planted a if a seed was planted that that day. Like I don't know what what became the outcome of that um situation. But just being able to listen and um, having that boldness from the Heavenly Father to be able to have that conversation, um, that work was able to be done because mm -hmm. I don't know exactly what came out of, out of it, but whatever came out of it, imagine if I didn't do that, that outcome would have never been there. And I think that's very important with doing God's work that we remove ourselves out of the scenario and keep God inside because... We're not going to see the outcome, um, the benefits of what is going to happen. The Heavenly Father sees it, so that's why he commands us to be able to do it. So that's why we got to take ourselves out of the 
scenario because we're human so we're going to be scared sometimes you're going to not mm-hmm. be willing so stuff like that so these are all natural emotions that we have but that's why the heavenly father is there that's why the source is there to be able to have him um with us and whatever promise you're scared you know the unwillingness you pray to god to give you the willingness pray to god to give you that boldness to be able to um deliver his his word and just one thing that i i understand from um my years of just being fully dedicated to um heavenly father is that once you follow him in his direction it leads to a multitude of impact that you wouldn't even be able to believe because um I, i'm just thinking imagine if when god told me as one again to preach imagine if i never got into preaching all them sermons all the messages i was able to um give out all them events that i spoke at those information would have never been received right so i I, th- I think of that imagine if i just stick to the content i was making imagine if i just stick to the comedian um stuff and the old stuff that i was doing Related to YouTube, like I, we, this wouldn't be able to happen, and clearly I wouldn't see the effect of it. Um, but just imagining that, it's like, imagine. I don't know where I'm going with that. So I'm, I'm just pretty much talking right now, but I'm hope. Hopefully, I gave y'all some type of message. I'm, I'm not even sure. <laughs> no, I feel you, bro. That's that's definitely something I think about. And um, if we if we don't do it, then of course God is gonna um send somebody else to do it but it is good to have that mindset of uh i don't want to waste my life i don't want to waste my call doing things that that don't even help me and it definitely don't help the next person that god or the people that god has called me to so it definitely puts you in that mindset of you know not wasting your time doing the will of god and yeah, basically, not wasting your time and doing the will of God and being able to bless others, and impact others' lives, while at the same time God is restoring and transforming you. So, yeah, I, I, I feel what you're saying, bro. And just imagine if they didn't pray, do they get the strength to go on, or do they fall into the trap that we fall into, just going through the motion, relying on their gift? It's a good reflection thought, you know. Does benefit to really just benefit to basically uh, really relying on Holy Spirit. Because what happens when we don't, we eventually get exposed. We eventually end up going the wrong course or the agenda of the flesh deceives us and causes us to be in derision or delusion, you know? Um, I really believe in my heart of hearts that it's important that we have a good and a strong relationship with Holy Spirit and a great prayer life, a growing prayer life. You know, it's not always going to feel great, but it's it's going to be a growing prayer life because it's you and the Lord. You're getting more insight about the Lord. The Lord is empowering you. The Lord is giving you strategy and giving you wisdom. Because what if there's a situation where he says, don't speak? You got to trust his wisdom to not do that either, to not speak. If he says, now speak, that's the level of trust we're all growing into. So let's keep going and keep growing in him. They did it, and they grew. God shook the fear out. God gave them the boldness. God empowered them to be light. And he'll do the same for us. I believe that. The thought of keeping your mind like, oh, I mean, that's just the old times. Like, you, you probably never going to see um, the room shake again. But I believe that uh, God is God is still the game. God is still the same God of the Bible. And if we all agree and we're not walking in the vision, we're not walking in fear. God will still be able to do some great things in our times, signs and wonders and healings and all that good stuff, man. Why not? It's, but that's a part of the growing process, too, man. Like, look, honestly, <laughs> this text showed me so much, and even just going through it again, showed me so much about why the prayer life is important, how we're going to be effective, why we need to rely on it, 
on the Holy Spirit. And I hope for those that are listening, those that don't have a relationship with him, call in the name of the Lord Jesus and be saved. And receive the Holy Spirit. It's my faith. Um, all you got to do is believe in Jesus Christ. If you're not a believer, if you're a friend of Ezron or if you're a friend of ours, and, you know, you just come across or you're going through some tough times and you feel like you've backslidden, call the name of the Lord. He'll redeem you and fill you with the Holy Spirit and deliver you where it might be deliverance might be needed. Because, man, that, that shaking and shifting God did is what gave acceleration to the body of Christ. And I believe, bro, those kind of things is still happening. You may not be written like I was reading the book about room shaking, literally, but I've had some encounters and some times with God with some amazing people where God literally shifted us from where we were praying, literally, geographically. There were times God, you know, time failed to tell some of the stories about how God shook rooms. It felt like the room was shaking. It wasn't an earthquake. It wasn't a heavy truck, heavy little truck passing by the road. But you felt the rumbling. Something was breaking. Amazing deliverance stories. God is still doing it. God will do it for those that are listening. Call in the name of the Lord. Be saved. Receive the Holy Spirit. And walk with him. And, um, yeah. What about this one? I just, it was just so stirred today. This is, this is one of my chapters, man. I'm never not stirred when I read that portion of scripture. So. Uh, you, 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 you good. This, this scripture was just so amazing for today. Acts chapter 4, verses 23 to um 31 from all the different ideas, different revelations that, that we um all got out of that. Um, and I know we already talked about our key takeaway um, from it, because I know we each got um, a bunch of different things. But this word for today was just powerful. And to end off, I usually don't do this. I think this is going to be my first time doing this, but we're going to do three closing prayers. So everybody, um, including myself, whatever you feel in your heart, to be able to pray for either yourself or just everybody just let the Holy Spirit guide you, and then we're going to close out from there. Um, we're going to do it um, age order, so I'll do Fraze, then we'll do Manny, and then we'll um, do Nate last. So uh, we want to make sure we got the elder last. So let the youngins pray first, and then the elder um, cover everything. Uh, just to make sure before we get into prayer, any more thoughts, any more um, ideas, revelation, just want to make sure. I'm 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 set, man. I'm set. Same here. This was good. I thought I thought the Holy Spirit was gonna bless Brother Nate with another one. I was preparing to hear something else. But, nah, it might, it might come through the prayer, man. I think I think we just let it be known. This was such a good session. We're just covering closing in prayer, and, and yeah, definitely. Really, uh, so or again, so me. Manny, then Brett and Nate. If you guys can, just please bow your heads and close your eyes. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We praise you. We worship you. We thank you for this day that you've made our rejoice and began to God. We thank you for Bible study, God, a time where we as brothers could come together, God, where iron could be able to sharpen iron, God, to be able to educate each other on your word, God, to let the Holy Spirit God is during this time. God, we just thank you for this session today, God, from all the different revelation that we receive on why a prayer life is so important to our works of God, why checking in with the source is always important, why letting you guide us is very important, God, because I know sometimes we get scared, sometimes we get discouraged, sometimes we don't have the willingness in us, but Father God, we just pray that we'll let you lead and us follow, God. We pray that we'll continue to just seek after you each and every day, God, through the Bible study and through our individual time, God, just to continue to grow that relationship with you, God, and we just pray that anytime we're going to speak um, to your people, God, that we'll always 
checking in with you before God for you to give us the guidance on how to do your work, Father God. And we just pray that this Bible study was a blessing to other people, God. We just pray that the message that we have today was able to come across, Father God. We just thank you for this time and I just praise you and I just worship you, Father God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. But dear Lord God, I just thank you for this opportunity. I thank you for my brothers, Erskine and Daniel and just being able to fellowship and learn with them. Lord God, I just pray, Lord God, that as we go into the new week, as we go on even to this night, Lord God, that you would just give us the boldness to be who you have called us to be, Lord God, that we will not move without your direction, Lord God. I pray as we just go into new seasons, as we're inching closer to a new year, Lord God, that you would just shine light upon our path, Lord God, that you would just give us guidance of the connections, Lord God, the relationships, Lord God, the, the missions and the plans that you have for our neighborhoods, our cities, Lord God, this nation. I pray, Lord God, that you would just give us direction, Lord God, that you would just fill us with the fullness of your Holy Spirit. Let us not rely on ourselves. Let us not walk in, in our flesh, but walk in the Spirit. In your mighty name, amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for this time that we got together. Thank you, Lord, for the motivation for young Christians and um, encouragement for all believers at large in the World Wide Web. Father, I thank you for those that will watch, peers, the family, just those that will view, those that will watch, that will share, those that will have their own discussions with their family, their own discussions with their peers. Father, I thank you for this outlet, the demonstration of how to be light. Father, I thank you for the demonstration of how we should posture our heart toward you. Holy Spirit, as they pray in Acts 4, I pray in our lives where we are in this season of our lives, Father, Lord Jesus, just give us the boldness uh, to be everything you've called us to be, whether it's in preaching or teaching whatever means you raise us up, however, you, to whom we'll interact with, Father, in your spirit, just uh, be the lens that we're looking through. We see the world. We see the needs, Father. And Father, will speak where you tell us to speak. We sound where you need to be silent, but more so just to be just vessels that will honor you, vessels that will just be uh, light for you, Lord Jesus. And I also pray in the name of Jesus that because of these lives, committed to following you. Let the sphere of influence where we all will serve. Lord, let as our prayer life grow, Lord, let there be shakings around us, whether it be shaking for sifting, whether it be shaking for perspective, whether it be shaking for preparing us for, uh, or even whether it be shaking to give us the boldness to continue, whatever it means, Lord, because, Father, we, we need you. We, we want to serve you. We want wherever we are, I should have influence to know that you are God, you are good. And Lord Jesus, I pray that you will equip us and give us boldness by your Holy Spirit. By, by, by your Holy Spirit, continue to do signs and wonders in and through our lives. Let your son Jesus be magnified. Continue to use this outlet as a means for salvation, as a means for uh, deliverance, conversations about the word. Let there be conversations about scriptures that spring up because Ezra is having conversations with his brothers in Christ, with his mentors in Christ, with those that are his peers in Christ, Lord Jesus, brothers and sisters, everything that he stretches out his hand to do, let it be blessed. Let everything that he does to motivate for young Christians, let it spring forth with a double portion anointing, a double portion favor. We agree, we believe, Father, we know that you've done great things and you continue to do great things through this life and through our lives for the honor and glory of your name. Thy kingdom come and will be done through us. In Jesus' name, we give your name to praise. Amen. 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 As I open my eyes, I keep on forgetting that this ring light is bright. Who? Mm -hmm. This ring light is bright. Hold on real quick. You wish you just had some dimmers or something. <laughs> I, no, that's how I just went and dimmed it. <laughs> I, I got it all the way. I got it to the um, full brightness. 
Hey. Got some food coming? Mm, I ain't got no food coming. Uh, I wish. <laughs> uh, but ooh, let's end up this video. All right. My eyes are good. All right. Thank you guys so much for coming back to another episode of Bible State. Thank you guys so much for coming back. Uh, just continue to come along in this journey with us as we continue to dig deep to learn more about the Heavenly Father to continue our relationship. Uh, for iron to be able to sharpen iron, just thank you guys so much for coming back. If you haven't already, please like the video, subscribe if you're new, please turn on your post notification. That way, anytime I upload, you two will send your notification. This is Motivation for Young Christian. I'll see you guys in another episode of Bible Study. Bye. Peace. You got to do a salute too, brother Nate. Bless y'all, man. Peace and peace, y'all. This is it for the video, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Thank you guys. Thank you guys so much. If you haven't already, like the video. Subscribe if you're new. Please turn on your post notification. That way, anytime I upload a video, YouTube will send your notification. This is Motivation for Young Christian. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.